I'm, I'm in Portugal with my parents, but I still, I will write it. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't. So I wrote it myself, you know, just something very quickly. And, and uh, we were, yeah, for the very first time in history, we made the story as it was written in the script. <laughs> 100%? hundred uh, percent. And where did you shoot this time? Again in Prato. Into the woods? In Prato, yeah. Again, it was... There are some similarities, yeah. But in Prato and um, since, you know, I was directing, so I knew what I'm direct directing and how and how much time I have, so I'm able to keep it on time. Mm. We were really fast. I mean, we were done at 3 p.m. You started around 9? We met at 9 and 10.30 we started to shoot, yeah. That's, that's fast. How, how, how many will the movie be? Five minutes oh, I or don't something? Know. I don't know. But it's. I think it was slightly shorter than what we did with um, yeah. the story. So it was slightly short. I think I had like two pages. So what should I call you? Movie producer? Movie screenplay writer? Fi filmmaker. filmmaker. Independent filmmaker. Independent yeah. filmmaker. And uh, you're originally from Czech, right? But you've been living here for some time. Both. So I'm from Slov born in Slovakia, but lived in... Ah, oh, you moved there. So I'm born in Slovakia, but I have both nationalities, kind of, since my parents are from both countries. And I, so I was born in Slovakia, I raised up in Czech Republic, and so and I speak both, and now I live here. So I usually now I say, I'm, I don't know why what I'm saying, sometimes I'm mixing it up, but usually now I say Slovakia, even though... And uh, which one you prefer more? Well, I guess Vienna, now that it's... To most, live. To live, yes. Most livable city in the world. <laughs> Uh, yes, but I'm thinking of moving to Prague. To Prague? Why? Because of the film. It's There's better over there? 100%. There's more financing from the government? government? I'm not sure if there is, but there's all these huge movies for Netflix, Disney Plus and everything being produced because it's cheaper. There is not much. Problem. I heard that. I heard they are also thinking of opening big studios there. Just because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. They already did in uh, Munich. They opened huge Amazon studios, which is new for Europe to open studios of this size because Europe has never been like in this, in, an industrial place mm -hmm. to shoot movies. It's always been this uh, artsy farty, let's call it, where people just do what they really like and don't mm -hmm. really think of producing a lot and uh, just selling. Yeah. Now it's going to be different. Streaming is going crazy. Yeah. No, I'm, that's why I need to, I need, I, I don't know, I'm trying to find a job here, but I think that I might move that to Prague or just be like on both, in both cities would be the best for me. Yeah. I don't like to be just settled in one, I like to be like a hy hybrid solutions. Mm. I'm also thinking about, you know, filming in Thailand and... In Thailand? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, How that can happen? Oh, wait, I, I'm in touch with some uh, studio, like a... Just don't mention name. We are on the what? record. Don't mention the name. We are on the record already. We are on the record. Yes. Yeah. That's good that you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't tell you the name because I know I would have to think about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm in touch with some studio, and we might um, we might film something in the future if they are interested. So it's, that's also one project I'm writing currently. And what do you like to write more? What genre? Okay. What do you like to write, and then what do you end up writing because it sells? So it's hard to answer a question because it sells, because I wouldn't say that I've been selling my movies. Okay. Um, so, so, so far you're only producing in, really what you like. Yes, what I like in terms of selling anything, I could see it on YouTube, what I posted, and then of course, um, like the genre I was producing was more into like queer films mm -hmm. so and in this regard like sex sells yeah in terms of views but uh in terms of like what really sells I can't answer that question because then it's action I think action comedy these two things are always sell yeah but well, what have you been doing before this because uh I've been on you for a little more than a year now and uh, I remember when we first met, you were just not just starting, but just really starting seriously to get into this. So what are you doing before this? What is, did you study something or what is, do you have a hidden profession that you <laughs> quit because of filmmaking? Good question. <laughs> yes, uh, indeed. So um, to be honest, actually just to 
kind of tell the whole story. I'm not really new to filmmaking in terms of uh, the whole topic. I started to make films when I was nine. Nine? Yes. So How's that possible? It is, yeah. I was, uh, I was doing cartoons, so or making cartoons, so um, uh, I went to a, a film school back in Czech Republic mm -hmm. uh, where I was had a tutor or someone who was guiding me and so for I think about I don't know how many years I think till I was 15 I was making cartoons and then I gave up on that because I went to Germany and I focused more on my language skills and mm -hmm. my <clears throat> experience abroad and when I was 18 I was thinking well what should I study uh, and I was still thinking about film but then I thought and back then, I was like, yeah, probably that's not the best option because you might not end up earning so much money. So it would be go, a waste of time. Let's go for business. So yeah, I ended up studying international business, even though I was actually applying also for um, transportation management. Mm -hmm. That's also another thing yeah. I'm interested about. And... Uh, I did I did like uh, studying international business because that was uh, very relaxed where I studied. Um, <laughs> where so did you study? I studied in Dresden in, in Germany. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's an amazing city for studying, and so I was studying in the University of Applied Sciences. So it was not really a university; it was more smaller classes, and I think for me it was more like social studies. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, learning how to network and how to, you know, just uh, socially expand your horizon. But it's funny because you just mentioned a few minutes ago that uh, you're not still not good at selling your movies. And now you're telling me that you studied international business, yeah, networking. Yeah, that's interesting, right? It's like, did you go to school or what did you do during the, the time? But business is not... Um, it's not always about uh, everything about selling, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there are different aspects of, of, things, of yeah. business, so I think I wouldn't say that, and exactly. That's also what I'm telling myself, like, I studied this and I should be able to sell. <laughs> um, but I think we can get back to this later, try to keep the sure. question, because um, I, I think I have an answer to that. But what I wanted to say is that, so I studied this uh, because I wanted to improve my languages. I learned English, French, uh, and of course German, and um, we could go abroad. Now I know also with film you can go abroad and it's international, but back, back then it was not so obvious to yeah. me. So that was the main reason I studied it. So I ended up going to the United States, Luxembourg, and then I traveled around the world. And then I ended up here in Vienna for my master's studies, and uh, that was a uh, waste of time, I would say. <laughs> I would uh, call my studies the management of theory, which I will never use or apply in my life. Never know. <laughs> I don't think so. Where did you study? University of Vienna? Uh, the University of Economics. Okay. So, it's... Uh, I think it is a good university, but the study program I studied I was uh, fairly new. And uh, so basically they didn't know still what they want to teach us. That was, that was the problem. <laughs> they were experimenting with you. Yes. So exactly. It was kind of like you want to study, let's say, English and they offer you Hungarian. <laughs> so that's how I felt at the end of my studies. But anyway, so I finished that. I, and then I started to work um, and I got a really nice position uh, in the Austrian Post. Not the newspaper, but post yeah. office. <laughs> post, the punkt at uh, Yes. And um, so I worked there and I have to say that that job taught me a lot. I mean, I was a trainee and I could work in different departments within the Austrian Post, mm. but also in different companies which Austrian Post owns abroad. So I could travel and see the difference between a huge company and a small company, between different departments, between the people delivering parcels, but also people in top in the management. So, and I thought, well, I don't fit here any, anywhere. I didn't like it. I think, I was like, is it me or what's going on? And so you I quit. And I think, I wouldn't say I quit. I mean, they quit me, kind of. Uh, thanks God. They didn't prolong my contract, 
and then they say they want me to find the job in a different department because they still like me. Uh, I was trying to, but that kind of did not happen. I think it would be too difficult to talk about okay. it. But anyway, I just decided in the end that I don't want to continue and I want to try to figure out what I really want to do and what I like. And so I didn't continue to work. I said, okay, I was back then 26 and I told myself I want to have um, this time for myself to figure that out till I'm 30. And yeah, so now I'm 29, so still <laughs> <laughs> one year to go. We'll see how, how that works. But uh, so far, I don't regret any single day of that because I really... It's an experience. Everything's an experience. As well. I really like it. I mean, I, I do enjoy that. I mean, it's not always easy. I think I remember when I... Uh, I quit the job, it was actually around this time, so exactly three years ago, hmm. and um, then I went to visit my family, and then I told myself, okay, but you didn't quit just to travel around the world or just to have fun all the time, you quit in order to figure out what you want to do, and um, so I remember I was coming back by train in mid of summer, um, and I felt really depressed because I was like, oh my god. I'm going to Vienna, I don't have to wake up, I don't have anything to do in terms of like any duties, I don't yeah. have to go to work, I'm going to be here, all my friends are abroad or on holidays and you'll be in Vienna and you have to figure out what you want to do. So you thought you're going to be a filmmaker just because of this? Sorry? You thought you're going to be a filmmaker just because of, of all this that you just mentioned? So I have nothing to do, what should I do? Maybe I can be a filmmaker? Um, no, that was not that simple, so back then I, we were talking about already. I was uh, organizing meetups, or um, which I called Biggest Dreamers, and uh, I had kind of a small community where I, let's say, gathered strangers mm -hmm. once a month. And uh, what it was about is about it was about sharing dreams with strangers. Because dreams in the sense of dreams goals. that they've seen, or goals. Goals, okay. yeah, or goals. I mean. You can define it whatever, however you want. I think there is not like there isn't any single definition of a dream or goal. Mm. I think uh, I always leave it up to other people. But yeah, so we always met up and then we were sharing our dreams or our goals and tried to help each other. Because I think I'm a big believer in this that if you mm. share your dreams with strangers, they might help you to, you know, to get it or you get it faster that's good that you mentioned forget about my name and that you know me and tell me your dream my dream is um, that I would like to yeah I would like to be a filmmaker who can live out of it so I would like to produce films which I like which I care about which uh, can move somehow other people and uh, which can be you know viewed and uh, yeah, influence others so and it, it I don't have to uh, I would like to have like my probably my own production company. I would say. Is it easy here in Austria to do that? Talking, I, talking for yourself as a uh, European Union citizen. That's uh, also because it makes a big difference. That's also. that's also fair to mention. To be honest, I think that um, that. I cannot answer if it's easy or not because I haven't tried. I think I was still trying to prepare myself for that mm -hmm. step in terms of like to produce something which is independent and see if I can get and then learn more from professional productions, which is the step I'm taking right now mm -hmm. and getting more network and then see if I can uh, if I can open the, the production. But it could be that maybe I could do it also right now of course if you don't try you never know yeah i would say that um that uh i think it's you never know which way is the correct one of course there could be one way which takes you i don't know five years but it's more fun yeah and there could be the other way towards your dream which takes one year but you cry and whatever and whatever i don't know what's, what's better so for now i think probably i was taking the more cautious way and as I told you I have my internal deadline in <laughs> one year so that might maybe force me to be um, to take uh, more risk and oh, to see. what would fulfill the deadline uh, being paying being paid fairly for the first movie that you made all by yourself or how would it work that you fill up fill out your deadline until you're 30 
So what will happen? Like what? What, 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 what you should mean? happen that you will be complete until you're thirty and you say yes, I've, I I completed my goal of becoming a filmmaker so, until thirty. Because mm. right now you can call your, yourself a filmmaker, it, no matter how much you earn just from that. But uh, it, still, you are. It doesn't matter if you produce a short movie or feature mm-hmm. film. So what then? Uh, to me, the goal is already fulfilled. So what would be? You said I have one more year. What do you expect? To more? be like to sustain myself with it. Completely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you and don't have to do a side job or another daily job and then do this as a side job, yes. right? Yes. Yes. And but again, like there is no like there isn't any definition which says okay i have to earn 2000 euros per month uh, just with yeah. filmmaking and the goal is reached i think that uh when i'm 30 i um i need to see like okay does that does this way make sense so i can i keep i continue that so or do i say okay well it doesn't make any sense i can't so what i told you is that for example right now i'm trying to apply for paid jobs yeah so so if I can say, okay, well, I can at least half of my income comes from filmmaking and the other half comes from something else or whatever, that would be for me, okay, it does make sense. Let's co- let's continue this yeah. way. If I see that I've been applying for a year for jobs or trying to get paid gigs and I can't get anything because I don't have A, B, C, D or whatever... Yeah then it might mean for me, okay, it doesn't make any sense, or maybe I should try to stick to a different road or whatever. So something like this, what I what I meant with this goal. It makes sense. What did you expect from Vienna before getting here, and what did you get when you got here? Mm-hmm. Were you disappointed in a good way or a bad way? or? I mean, I don't think in a bad way because you're still here. <laughs> so, what did you find differently, but the still that you still liked mm. about Vienna? Okay, I have to think about it. Yep. So I, so I moved here because I wanted to move to another city, German-speaking city, international and open-minded city. Uh, 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 hold, hold it for a moment. Yeah. Why German-speaking? Because you also said at first you want to move to a German-speaking country. You went to Dresden to study. Exactly. So Why I, German-speaking countries? I When I was, I don't know, it was back in 2007 when uh, we traveled for the first time west. Okay. We went with my family to um, Great Britain. Uh-huh. And so I for the first time I saw, okay, I saw Germany, I saw Belgium, I saw France and Great Britain and uh, and I spent also some time in Germany and in Great Britain and I just, back then I just saw that the British culture did not fit me really well or I couldn't imagine myself living that. But on the other hand, Germany really uh, fit me, I would say, because yeah. I, I liked it because back then, 2007, I thought, okay, it's very similar, like my country. That's 15 years from now. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like my country, so it's kind of like Czech Republic or Slovakia, but 40 years later. And <laughs> back then I was always like, oh, nothing works in my country, and this is bad, and they have everything new and everything. And so yeah. now I know that there are other things more important, and also I'm very inspired by countries where the culture is totally different. But back then in 2007, I really liked that. And um, so I went to Germany and I really liked that as well. And I just wanted to try something else. That's why when I was uh, searching for uh, for German-speaking country and or city, I was looking and for cities which are closer to Czech Republic or Slovakia because I didn't want to be too far away from my from my family. And based on this, <laughs> you, have you, just Vi- you have just Vienna. Linz, Nuremberg, yeah. and Dresden. I was there already, so so I was like hesitating between Linz and Vienna, and then in the end, I ended up here. I moved by bike, by the way. By bike? I moved by bike. Yeah. What do you mean? I like for the first. So I when I I took my stuff. Um, I biked from Czech Republic with like with uh, my stuff for three weeks just to live here with my backpacks. To seriously? Yes. Not you didn't jump on a train. You just. 
So I, bu- I bike from Brno, so it's not that far away. It's like 100. From Brno, is, is it in border? I think just is it's it 150 the kilometers from here. Yeah. So it's not that far. I mean, is what, where they make the beer? No, they make beer everywhere in Czech oh, Republic. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, and I biked the, um, I biked to Vienna, and I'm just like, okay, so one day I can tell my kids, you know, back then we didn't have cars, we had to bike. <laughs> <laughs> um, I drove my bike 150 kilometers yeah. to give you a future. <laughs> yeah, I also actually moved out of Vienna uh, by bike once because I was living for half a year, also somewhere else in between, uh, but. Uh, yeah, and you were asking me, like, if I found something different what, than what I ex- expected. I think I'm not sure what I was expecting. I thought, I knew that, of course, Austria is not the same as Germany. Uh, I can tell you maybe the difference is how I feel between yeah, here and please. Dresden. Surprisingly, I felt, I feel like more home probably in here. Germany. No, in, in Germany. Germany. Even, even, or despite the fact that Austrians are probably mentally wise uh, closer to Czechs and Slovaks than Germans are, but really my personal mentality is uh, more German or Swiss, I would say, since I'm really like. You think there's time. a lot of difference? Um, in the mentality? Yeah. It's hard to describe. It's like there is, and it's like between Czechs and Slovaks, but you can't really say what it is. <laughs> you feel it. Yeah. And they. I would say the humor is different. The it's Austrians are a lot. They plan less, and they're probably a bit. They more plan less than Austrians Germans, than Germans. Yes. Okay. Yeah, than Germans they do. I never thought that. I always thought that Austrians plan a lot ahead. Yeah, they, I'm not saying that they don't, but they plan less than Germans do. Okay. And um, um, so, so, so these are like the tiny things, but. I would say that I felt more integrated in Germany than I am here in Vienna, but that might not have to do anything with Austrians, but with the city of Vienna itself, since it's very international. Yeah. So so I'm integrated within the city, but I don't feel integrated within the country, as like within Austrians that I don't know that much about. I don't know the pop culture, the culture, the songs or or anything as I did in Germany where I was really integrated because most of my friends were Germans whereas here most of my friends are international since it's really mm. hard to find well, let's say a Viennese person like when I see someone I'm taking a picture of them mm-hmm. so yeah cool. and uh, I want to go back because I like the topic of filmmaking as well. Okay. <laughs> so I would like to hear a bit about the movie that you just did. You were talking about it before, but uh, we also like to know what's going to happen. And most importantly, when are we going to see it and where? What's your plans or have you scheduled something? So I think you're speaking about my feature film I made. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, well, that's the biggest project so far, right? That's the big, biggest yeah. project so far. It was really big and um, I'm still surprised that we made it um, because we did a feature movie with 500 euros. <laughs> How did you do that? That's that's a good question. Tell right? me more about it. <laughs> so, so I wrote my script, right? 70 pages and then I found um, a guy, a producer and I told him about the script and then he asked me like what's my budget and I said 500 euros or no actually back then I said nothing um, and then of course I invested something and I ended up with um, 500 euros and that was basically just for food and for some tiny props or something else um, I have to mention that of course like when usually when you start out and you make some films you look for people who basically volunteer for you so it's it's uh on one hand i think it's really nice aspect of filmmaking because you have people passionately working for something and they're not being paid on the other hand it's something which is really bad for these people because then that's also my problem they cannot sustain themselves because there is so much going on uh, like which is not paid yeah so um when we when we made that it was uh, also during the corona time and lockdowns so we people didn't have many jobs right there was not much going on so and that was uh, actually good for me because I could get uh, really good people and uh, they were so nice 
in the end, I have to also mention is that we did get financial support from the city of Vienna. That was mm. on the last day of our shoot, uh, which uh, I kind of, I just said, you know, in the, from the beginning, okay, I'm not going to wait for the support because I was like, I just want to make it. And I didn't know if I can or not with all these lockdowns around. So we just, um, we just made it. And then in the end, I tried to at least uh, pay back a little bit, you know, to people who yeah. supported me. That's good. But uh, yeah, you can make it. So the I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm the best script writer ever. <laughs> um, not at all. But what I can write is a movie I can make. What's the plot about? No, so without spoiling it, of course. I wouldn't spoil. It. So it's a it's a it's an episodic film about um, two gay couples living in Vienna and about their daily problems with relationships, money, etc. So they what they deal with. We don't see that often. So yeah, yeah, it's that's, all focused on straight couples. That's all we see mostly. I think now more and more the, no, I wouldn't say the focus shifts, but I think you see more and more people, like films uh, with these topics coming out, and then I saw that there are also some feature films being produced in Austria about this topic, mm. also now being in production. So it's becoming better, and I think also that you have more of these, let's say, queer couples and uh, mainstream movies where the film is not primarily about this topic and I think yeah. that's cool as well. And how's Austria about this? Isn't it a bit conservative about financing movies because it's a Catholic country? I think it's exactly the opposite. How I is it think the opposite? That I'm, I'm very curious about it. What did they say? Well, at the end they, they supported you, but uh, were they hesitating when they saw that it's a movie about gays? Because no. if, you, if you support a movie about gays, it means that you support gays. Which is fine for me, but uh, for a, a country or a city that is Catholic? So, I would say that it's exactly the opposite. That they probably prioritize even movies with these topics. Since I know many people who uh, applied for these uh, financial supports yeah. here. And they didn't get anything because they were just writing you know, stories on whatever, straight couples yeah. or something. Which is quite common. So, and since this is not common, this is something they want to support because right. it's something unique. So, and in general, I would say that um, City of Vienna is very supportive. I don't know about Austria as a country if they support like uh, specifically this, but I would say so since we had um, right now, I think there are at least two feature films being made with uh, this topic so I wouldn't say that this is a problem okay. actually it's, maybe I didn't it's, follow up much. actually it's I would say it's plus if you want to get something right now so I, I, I'm working also on another film a short film which got uh, support and it's uh, also a queer topic so well, that's good and then I should think of my next script to include it <laughs> yeah. if I want to make my film maybe <laughs> That's good to know. And uh, going back to the question, when are we going to see it and when? So we had already um, like an Austrian premiere on a festival. So it's International Tran Transition uh, Queer Festival in Vienna. That was last week. We are right now also doing um, a festival run. So we applied for various festivals around the world. And um, most probably the premiere is going to be around uh, mid-October online since we online it's going to be online yeah you think it's going to be another lockdown <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a harsh not, prediction I, I think that I, I, I think I'm uh, planning uh, to go if there is I'm planning to go somewhere else where there isn't because <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're planning it since now to be online you should know something about another lockdown coming maybe let's yeah. see it's recorded let's we'll see I will see. open this recording again in October. <laughs> Let's see if you predicted something or not. I think in October not, but maybe in November. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something uh, about the next project that you're thinking. You said that you're doing this short movie or it's already producing, pre-producing, so, post-production? Um, so I am making several f things. I've been uh, making other shorts. I'm helping out with other projects where I'm not the producer or director, so I have different roles. And uh, I think that's also probably something I could mention, uh, which could be interesting sure. for people who like to make films, 
is that um, I go to now to Helsinki to. You're going to Helsinki. I'm going to Helsinki in two weeks, I think, for um, Kino Cabaret, and that's uh, to put it short, a festival for filmmakers. And this is how I got back to filmmaking. Mm. Well, we were talking about it, but then we uh, drifted away. Uh, and uh, I learned about this back then, three years ago, in, uh, I think, end of July. And uh, this festival is something amazing. So you have uh, filmmakers coming from different countries together for, for, I don't know, let's say one week in one location and then people have a production meeting so they said okay I have an idea I would like to make a film about yeah. I don't know two guys biking and one falling down and then being chased by zombies or whatever yeah. um, and it, and then you say I need three actors a DOP a director an editor or someone who produces music and you have let's say 72 hours to make this film And the funny thing is that in these 72 hours, you don't make just your film, but you can participate also in other movies. Oh, is this like, like the 72-hour film festival? Kind of. Oh, no, that's the 48-hour. They're, they're different. There than... are some like this that you don't really have an idea. You get a topic right there. Or isn't this the case? There are different okay. like ways. So they sometimes they give you topics. Sometimes you, cannot, but you come up with your topic. So... So yeah, so I, I joined this, um, I would say community, the worldwide community, and uh, and that I've been making a lot of short films, and I learned how to act, how to direct, how yeah. to do sound, everything. So so lately I've been working on the shorts I've made, uh, I made in Brussels, and now in two weeks I'm going to Helsinki, where I'm going to, I think, make other movies. But so currently, my big projects are again the second, let's say, a sequel of uh, of the feature film "Who Are We," which uh, we talked about. Yeah. And I'm thinking also about, um, you know, producing a film in Thailand. But let's see if that happens. How did Thailand came to your mind? So I told you that I've been making uh, queer films uh -huh. and. Um, I would say Southeast Asia and especially Thailand are uh, really pioneers in these topics. They uh, they make a lot, and also the filmmaking industry is quite good on there. So this March I went to Thailand to to check it to see how mm. how it is. So I spent one month in Bangkok and was trying to network, trying to I was trying to see okay how how is it actually so is it that easy can I find someone and um, and then I yeah then I uh, found the production company we are talking see if we make something or maybe find someone else but uh, I think Thailand is a good um, country to to produce something like this because there is The infrastructure is there. Yeah. There are a lot of companies. There is also the audience. Well, one of the best movies was produced at the beach with DiCaprio and Tilda yeah. Swinton long ago. But actually, I haven't seen many movies from Th being shot in Thailand recently. Can you mention any that is also famous? Ooh, famous, I don't know. Um, Maybe these action movies that go do something there. I have no idea. There, there's a lot being produced, but um, yeah, as I say, I probably would go again my independent way somehow. Yeah, I'll see how how it turns turns out. Well, maybe the company goes good. Maybe maybe you make it this year to start it. Or let's see if there's a lockdown here. I'm in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't send me pictures. <laughs> how do I pronounce your, your last name? Because I know Yirka Chirka. Right? Cherny. Cherny. Yeah. Okay. Like black. It's George Black. What does it mean? George Black. George Black? Cherna means George Black? No, Cherny means Black. Ah. And Yirka means George. George. Ah, George is... For, now it makes kind of sense. Yeah. Is that uh, Slovakian? My typically, name, I mean? My or? name is Czech. And yeah, I think it's typical, yeah. Well, uh, I enjoyed our conversation. And... I liked that we caught up. It's been some time. I'm glad that you were busy working. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I would kindly ask you to let me know when you hear about nice activities like this film, like this filmmaker festival. Mm -hmm. I would see if I can join. I'm not going to take your jobs <laughs> from well, your hands. It's good if you join. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we should catch up more often. Yeah. Thanks for okay. coming all the way here. And till next time. You. Thank you. Make sure who's listening to subscribe. And there's there's also a rating button there. If you see on Spotify, there's a rating button. And don't and I just put a five star there. It costs nothing for you, but it's good for me. <laughs> so uh, till next time, you got all the social medias and names of Yirka in the description, and you can uh, see what he does because he's doing doing very good things. And it's good if you see him now because who knows where he gets until he's 30 and then you won't be able to find him but you should be the guy or girl that say oh i know this guy and since he was barely producing his first movie look where he is now you might be this person <laughs>